Okay, uh, this is just to finish off the uh, automation uh, introduction. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I, I can't remember now whether I've already shown you how to... Uh, sorry, I'm doing this on a different day. Um, I can't remember whether I've shown you how to do the sort of X and Y um, fader or um, control object, um, how to, how to um, record data from those. I can't remember whether I did that into a table or not. But anyway, in this case, I'm using exactly the same model as I was using before. So Metro, Controls Counter. This time I've got a pack object with three items, available items in it, or arguments. Um, so the first one throughputs the number from the counter object. And then I've got two, one each for X and Y inputs. Um, and those are running into a col, and the col is the thing that is storing that data. So if I <coughs> run Metro and wiggle this a bit, um, I've got it so that it will stop at, at number 127, because this uh, this output here, if I unlock, unlock the patch, it gives us a carry, how to hit, counter hit maximum flag. So basically it will output a bang uh, when the counter hits 127. At that point, I'm sending it that bang around to switch the toggle off, which it does. Um, so I will only get a, um, a count through to 127. And uh, if I double click on call and lock the patch, we get that, uh, that data <coughs> having been stored there. This is the x axis, this is the y. So the two values are stored in call. So we've stored the data, and then in this next one, um, notice that call, uh, uh, call automation, so we've given call a name, um, and that means, as you can see from over here, calls with the same name reference the same data. Double click them when the patch is locked to open them and check. So uh, I double clicked on this one, we got that data. If I double click on this one, we get exactly the same data, and uh, the same with this one over here. So they will all store the same data, which is very handy because it means that you can record data in one part of the patch and then read it back in a totally different part of the patch should you wish to. Um, <clears throat> so in this case, uh, I'm going to read it back. So if I uh, click on uh, get it to start, it's now following that, um, following the sort of squiggles that I did before. And just as before, if I slow it down, we will find that uh, those movements get rather jerky when they actually start. Hang on, there we go. So they are quite jerky in this patch. So we use the same idea as we did before in order to smooth those movements out uh, by using the line object and pack into that. So remember that uh, in the left hand side of pack we have uh, the number of the, the destination, if you like, um, and then in the right hand um, argument we have the uh, the time it's going to take to get there. Now, as far as pack is concerned, remember these are just numbers. Uh, it's just making a list of two numbers, one of which happens to be the number that uh, well, each each subsequent number that we're using to update our um, our uh, slider down here, our x y slider down here. And <coughs> this number happens to be being used for um, the Duration, duration, so the time between hits of the metro. Um, but as far as line, line is concerned, those are the means of um, providing a um, a smooth line between each subsequent uh, number, each subsequent uh, you know x y number that we've got. So in this case run it and you can see even if I slow it down quite considerably we've still got a very smooth movement between the various points. So that's what this patch is doing exactly the same as we had before we've just got two uh, axes of data being stored instead of one.